hello. I'd like to introduce myself. I am H.J. Templin, the founder, builder, and director of the Camp Petasiga, the log cabin camp for boys, which was established in 1933. I'm in my 90s now, but I thoroughly enjoy my frequent visits to camp and reliving the pleasant memories I have of as of being the director of the camp. Now, let us learn the history of Camp Medicine. Back in the 1930s, this is Jim as he appeared as the camp director. Let's call him Chief, as his hundreds of campers affectionately called him. At the age of 23, Chief was ready to fulfill a dream he had, which was initiated through his Boy Scout skills where he earned the coveted Eagle Scout Award and through his experiences as a counselor at the U of K summer camps. Let us view through the use of rare 50-year-old pictures of how, first, the camp was built and then the life and activities of its campers. Chief had visited many possible campsites before he arrived at Pickerel Lake near Petoskey. The first thing he saw was a beautiful white sand beach and a vast area of primitive forest, tangled brush, stump, and downed timber, each needing a tremendous amount of clearing and cleaning. And then Chief saw this clear, cool stream. It was Cedar Creek, a clear, cool trout stream which bisected the property. Chief had found his camp. Now this is uh, Cedar Creek. The thing that really sold me on the camp. This is a beautiful trout stream. And if you look real close, you probably can see a couple of three nice brown trout in there, which uh, the kids used to catch. Alongside the creek stood a long deserted homestead and a barn on the only clearing on the property. Chief purchased the campsite in the fall of 1934 he arranged for building logs to be cut and hauled by horse and sleigh from the far end of the lake over the ice. After the ice melted in the spring, the logs were floated over. Of course, all these logs had to be peeled of their bark for building the log buildings. Then came the back-breaking job of clearing the forest and the beach to form the canvas. Great piles of debris were removed it was all hand labor since no tractors were available. Horses were used instead. What they'd do is they'd cut the brush around the, the uh, roots and then we'd bring a horse over here, put a chain around it and yank it out. And down beyond the, the uh, where the brush starts down at the other end there, we started piling that. The brush was picked as high as it could be thrown from a wagon. These huge piles were burned by the DNR. Yeah, they could send a man out here to uh, do the job for us. Because I, I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> so I thought, boy, we set this whole thing on fire. It would be terrible. So uh, he just came out there and asked for kerosene, slapped it on there and threw a match in it. And that was it. <laughs> the huge fire could be seen for miles around. I believe you can probably see it from the task. While the clearing was underway, the location of the building sites were cleared large enough to start the log cabin's construction. This is where the mess hall will be built and one of the camper's cabins. The logs are expertly carved and put in place for the mess hall, the recreation hall, and the several camp living quarters. So Chief's dream had come true. He now had his camp and was ready for his campers. They arrived by train and by car to start their great adventure. They were dressed in the red and gray official camp uniforms displaying the camp colors. They were met by Chief Greenleaf of the Ottawa tribe, who will live with them at camp. The campers gathered in the Great Hall and were assigned their cabins, where they will live for eight weeks. Six boys, a junior counselor, and a senior counselor to each cabin. Now that's the way the cabin looked. And uh, see in each corner, 
with two bunks. And these were spring mattresses, box springs in here. And there were two lavatories and a toilet in each one. And then we had, you see back there in the back, each, each of the kids had two great big drawers and hanging space. But first things first, when do we eat? The dietitian and head cook took care of that. The first three years, the camp was without electricity, and the huge range was fueled with coal and then by gas. The mess hall held a separate table for each cabin. After each noon and dinner meal, the camp store was open first to junior and then senior campers. Each camper had a punch card, which limited him to a certain amount of candy each week. The camp-owned laundry was made ready. It operated on a one-day service to each camper once a week. The camp's 30-foot Chris Craft Cruiser came back from dry dock to fulfill its duty on scenic cruises, frequent trips to Atlanson, and finally the navigation cruise the senior sailors had studied for. The 225-foot pier must be removed and replaced each year due to the winter's ice. The administration building is open and ready to take care of necessary business. Now this building here is was my pride and joy because it is the administration building. My office was in here, and this end here was the camp store. And the kids could come there and buy candy and supplies and, and uh, send their mail. The rec building is ready for its assemblies, games, stage shows, and movies. This area here where is a little uh, open area was a large, beautiful log cabin, probably one of the largest of the state. It was 60 by 40. It had a gym type area and a stage, and also had uh, arrangements for moving pictures. While the resident doctor or nurse readies the clinic office for any health problems, and ping pong tables are always ready for an exciting game. After breakfast each day, the head counselor, Uncle E.P. Faulkner, gathers his counselors to the counselor's meeting to arrange the leaders for the various activities scheduled by Chief Templin. This meeting is while the junior counselors are working with their boys on cabin cleaning for inspection. Then the general assembly for announcements, singing of camp songs, then break up for the morning classes. In establishing his camp, Chief provided plenty of free playtime, but he insisted that every camper should return home with many learned skills that he might use long after his years at camp. This was a, a learning camp, not just a babysitting camp. The kids learned here to canoe the right way by studying for a whole week and every other subject like sailing, navigation, aviation, it all required one whole week's instruction. There were two hours of instruction every day. And of course, as, as the, the boys learned, they earned various honors for doing that. Oh, take me back to Pedosiga, to the camp I love so well. Neath the campfire's glow, we frolic to and fro, round the cabins and the shore. So take me back to Pedosiga, to the camp I love so well. All my thoughts are with my pals at Pedosiga. So take me back to the camp I love so well.